Shalom, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakwadash, double honors to our elders and apostles of great millstone that taught us his truth, peace, love, and salutations to the hopeful like Akim, teaching and preaching his truth with all righteousness and sincerity. This is Akia Wasab. Today's lesson is entitled, It is Even the Time of Jacob's Trouble. The Lord willing to be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which are the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And as always, the sit-downs, the lessons, the street speaking is for the remnant, the elect, the Israel, and the Most High to use the gospel preach. It's 2024, and our elder apostle Tahar, through the Spirit, have named this year um, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. All right, so we want to start these lessons out pushing the vibration of prophecy. You know, at the end of the day, the testimony of Yahweh is the spirit of prophecy. So that's the spirit that you want to be in. And um, we're going to go ahead and open up with Revelation 19 and 10. Once again, Lord willing, be edifying to the Lord's elect. I actually start the ninth verse. It says, and he said unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb, which are the elect. All right. And this marriage supper is this knowledge, wisdom and understanding. That is what joins us to Yahweh, you know, to, to the heavenly father through his son, Yahweh Shah. And ultimately, when the elect get delivered, which salvation means to get saved out of immediate danger all right the elect will meet the lord yahweh shai in the air all right so that'd be the ultimate marriage or the joining together of the elect of israel with the lord yahweh shai but first it starts off with this truth and it's a blessing that we've been called to this truth as it says right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb and he said unto me these are the true sins of the most high all right and these words is faithful and true man everything that we read in these scripts will come to pass all right. And Jacob's trouble is one of the end time prophecies that we're looking forward to happen because as a hey, Esau uh, continue to put the squeeze down, you know, and show them horns, you know, he's going to he's going to destroy this financial system, man. And Lord, willing, we're going to get into it in this lesson and it's going to really change the game up out here. All right. Verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Now, background on the book of Revelation, you have Apostle John, which. Apostle John was the best friend of our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, he was the one that was laying on the Lord's bosom, you know, at the uh, at the Last Supper. All right, all right, at the uh, Passover, right before our Lord Yahweh Shai offered himself up on the cross. And as he um, <clears throat> was here in the island of Patmos for the testimony of Yahweh Shai, which these teachings are very controversial. All right, in the Roman Empire, which is the empire that our Lord Yahweh Shai came in. All right, this truth was looked at as treason. Okay, so as they were out on the highways and the byways, just as you see us today, teaching and bringing out the counsel of the Lord, you know, they was hearing about, you know, uh, speaking about Yahweh Shai coming to destroy this kingdom and to deliver the elect. So, you know, it was heavy persecution on the members of the church for the teachings of Yahweh Shai. So, as Apostle John is exiled on the island of Pat Patmos, which was a salt mines. You know, an angel was sent unto him to give him revealings of things that will surely come to pass. So he's going back and forth with an angel that's sent to him. So as it says here in the 10th verse, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see, thou do it not. So we're not supposed to worship the angels. All right. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Worship Yahweh for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. So. Those who are coming in the name of the Lord, they will have the testimony of prophecy. That's how you know. All right, even our Lord Yahweh Shai said when he was giving us wisdom, he said a tree may be known by its fruit. So what fruit is bearing on the trees of the elect? Well, they will have a testimony. Okay, we go here to Revelation 11. And we often go into these precepts, man. But as we get closer, these precepts, they're hitting harder and harder. So, no, I'm sorry. Um actually revelation uh 12 yeah these precepts they're hitting harder and harder man and this year started off with a major earthquake in japan it was over seven um um it was like a 7.1 magnitude earthquake man you know lord is hey letting it be known that judgment is finna break forth in the earth so this is Revelation 12 and 11, and they overcame him. Him is Esau Edom, which is the so-called white race. And when we speak about the Edomites, which Esau is Edom, we talking about the nobles, the upper echelon, the individuals behind the scene that's controlling the world and wickedness, the shadow government, the bankers. And 
the individuals that will overcome him is the elect. All right. So they is the elect overcame, which means get the victory over him, which is Esau and his system by the blood of the lamb. Our Lord, Yahweh Shai being a sacrificial lamb for the children of Israel to atone for their sins and bring them back in good standing or in good status with the heavenly father. Pursuing to Jeremiah 15, we were cast off out of his sight, you know, so we needed a sacrifice to bring us back in good standing. So our Lord, Yahweh Shai, he fulfilled that for us. All right, he fulfilled the things that was written in the prophecies concerning, you know, the son of the heavenly father coming to be a savior for the children of Israel. It says, and by the word, their testimony. So that's the testimony that the elect will have is the spirit of prophecy. And prophecy means to say before. It says, and they love not their lives unto the death. Because how could you love your lifestyle here if it's ruled by the wicked? You know, how can you love your lifestyle if everything here is contrary to the Israelite man? So we will yearn for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwell of righteousness. All right. We will be looking forward to the kingdom of heaven. And as we're waiting for the kingdom of heaven to come, the Lord said, go ye out on the highways and byways. All right. Which is one of the um, commands that the Lord Yahweh Shai told his disciples. Okay. So we go to Jeremiah 28, which Jeremiah, he was a Levite and he was on the scene during the time of the Kings leading up into the Neo Babylonian empire. In this particular chapter, he's going back and forth with a false prophet named Hananiah. Although Hananiah, he was coming in the name of the Lord, but the Lord wasn't dealing with him. Okay, because he was saying that the Lord has broken the yoke of Babylon. But the Lord told Jeremiah that, hey, you know, you're going to be over there, the southern kingdom, kingdom of Judah, which that encompassed the uh, Judah, Benjamin and Levi. They will be captives, which it was the nobles of Judah, you know. Of the king see it was some left behind when you go into the history even when you read about the prayer of Habakkuk um, is it the prayer of Habakkuk um, when D Daniel was in the lion's den which he was in there twice All right, he was in the lion's den during the time of the Neo-Babylonian Empire and as well as the Media Persian Empire but uh, when Daniel was in the lion's den you had Habakkuk which he was in the land of you know, Israel all right. Um, and through the spirit and poverty, how about Shemal Shai? Angel teleported a bet cook to bring Daniel some soup, you know, and uh, Dan and, and Dan Habakkuk told the angel that, you know, he he's never seen Babylon. You know, he's never been over there. So um, you had Israelites that was left behind. All right. So uh, Jeremiah, he was prophesying during that time leading up to the Neo-Babylonian Empire. And the Lord was telling Jeremiah to tell the Israelites, look, y'all finna be over there a long season, which was uh, about 70 years. All right. So he was going back and forth dealing with that. So in this particular chapter in the eighth verse, it says the prophets that have been before me and before the of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So this is the conversation of the prophets. We, these are the topics that we will be discussing while we're out on the highways and the byways, while we're doing our sit downs and our live streams. We'll be prophesying against many countries and against great kingdoms. America is a great kingdom. In fact, when you read in Revelation 17, it speaks about this harlot, this great city, which ruleth over the kings of the earth. So America is that top nation. All right, it's that great kingdom. And we're prophesying against that. The scriptures call it Babylon the Great, which will be destroyed, all right, by thermonuclear destruction during World War III, or as the scriptures call it, the Third Woe. All right, end of war, end of evil. Evil is bad times. F is time and ill is bad. Now, Elder Apostle Gabar broke that down years ago. So we're going to be speaking about evils to come, which in this lesson, we're talking about Jacob's trouble and of pestilences. So diseases, it says the prophet which prophesied peace. Now, when you read in Isaiah 48 and 22, it says there is no peace unto the wicked. Say, if you have shy, pursuant to Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the world in its power where well, the rulership is being governed by the wicked all right so there's no peace here any prophet that's prophesying of peace happening on this side the lord is not dealing with them peace is going to come in the kingdom of heaven which the kingdom of heaven is complete rulership of the israelites and earth starting off with our lord yahweh shai you know that's when the peace come when you read in hebrews the fourth chapter it speaks about their beginning to rest for the people of the most High. That's talking about the kingdom. That's when the peace for us is going to come. 
So it says the prophet which prophesy of peace when the word of prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that Yahweh have truly sent him. So we're prophesying all these sad perils that we read in the scripts, all these different events that will surely come to pass here in Babylon, the great and other parts throughout the world. All right. We, we are set up to, to discuss these things, to give warning. All right. When you go to Ezekiel, which Ezekiel, he was a Levite as well. A lot of the prophets were Levites. Um, Ezekiel was set up, <clears throat> which we're all spiritually Ezekiel as captives here in Babylon, you know. Uh, so these messages apply to us too. But when you read in Ezekiel 3 and 17, it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word out of my mouth and give them warning for me. So a part of this testimony of Yahweh, which is the spirit of prophecy, it encompasses warnings. Okay. We're supposed to be warning the children of Israel. All right, let's go over here to uh, this King James Bible online. And it's, you, we see the same sentiment happening all throughout the scripts. Matter of fact, let's do this. Okay. We need the 1611. All right. Second Edges 15. Which Second Edges 15 goes into Jacob's trouble. All right. This is Second Edges 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So this same message that Ezekiel received, Edges received it as well. And that's two witnesses. So these messages, all right, is for us as well. Okay. Now we do prophesy unto the nations pursuant to Jeremiah the first chapter, but chiefly the, the word is for Jake. Now, um, going back to the title all right it is even the time of jacob's trouble when we speak about jacob's trouble we're pursuing we're, we're referencing was written here in jeremiah 30 and 7 okay so when you go here um i start the first verse and it says deliverance from captivity promise all right scripture speak about the promises and a part of the promises that is that the elect will get delivered from captivity. It says the word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh saying, thus speaketh Yahweh, power of Israel, saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. So and that's how we got the precepts. That's how we got the Bible today, should I say. You know, the Lord spoke the word and great was the company of them that published it. The Lord had to, you know, this word rest on individuals and were the prophets. You know, whether whether it was through visions, dreams, you know, and they were instructed to write these things down. OK, it says in the third verse, for lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. Now, Israel represents the, the northern kingdom and Judah represents the southern kingdom. And collectively, they make up the 12 tribes of Israel. So what it's speaking about is the deliverance from for the Israelites, all the tribes from captivity now now remember when jeremiah was on the scene um you know the northern kingdom was already pushed out the 10 tribes they were already pushed out to assyria where later they came together to um go to a land where never mankind dwelt and our referencing was written in second address 14 you know where they took counsel and they went down through the persian gulf and they sailed all the way to the americas so when jeremiah was on the scene you know they didn't know what, what was up with the northern kingdom so here it is, uh, Jeremiah is receiving these prophecies about the northern and the southern kingdom getting delivered from captivity. All right. So this is talking about now. All right. Now, the northern and southern kingdom are together collectively here in Babylon the Great. You got all the tribes here from Issachar to uh, uh, Levi. All right. Which is the so-called Haitians. Issachar is the Mexicans. Simeon, the Dominicans, of course, Judah, the Negroes, you know, Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans. You got all the tribes over here. So America is going to be the place of this great deliverance. But before the deliverance happens, you're going to have this trouble. It says, Say, if you how, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. Going to the promises that the Lord gave to Abraham, Isaac, and they rested upon Jacob and all his descendants. It says, and these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. So once again, collectively, this makes up the 12 tribes. It says, for thus saith Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and of not peace. And that's the vibration you hear when we coming out and we speaking these words, man. 
We speaking that we sp we speaking that you know Esau Edom system is finna be destroyed, and prior and right before it gets destroyed, you know you're gonna have chaos, anarchy, the love of many wax and cold, diseases, pestilence, Esau coming down with great wrath, you know the the pushing of the MOTB, the implantable technology, and you ain't gonna be able to you know find naturally support yourself in this system without that. But in the prophecies pursuant to Revelation 14 and 9, those that take that chip, they will get destroyed by Yahweh Shai and the angels. So, you know, um, that's one of the reasons why we, we know that we're close to the end because the, the chip is associated with Yahweh Shai coming. But all these different perils is going to be taking place in the earth, man. So when we speak about these things, hey, you're going to hear, you're going to hear the voice of trembling and the fear and not peace. It says, Ash ye now see whether a man doth travail with child, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. So it's gonna be so much pressure and trouble out here to where you know you're gonna have men, you know, you know, afraid. You know, you wanna have men in travail like a woman with child. And just as a woman with child, as she's going through her different, you know, contractions leading up to being delivered of the, the man, the, the child. You know, them contractions, they're consistent. They're back to back to back to back to back. So that's the problems that these people is going to be running into. They don't think they're going to escape famine just because they put up food. And then here it is. There's going to be a power outages. You know, they're going to escape power outages. But then it's going to be martial law and FEMA camps and, and detention centers. You know, the Lord is going to bring that pressure upon the earth, man. He's going to use his sword to do it. You know. It says, at last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So that's Jacob's trouble, but the elect will get saved. Shalom, Akim. Stay strong.